on this computer. Hello, welcome to the Package Manager's Weekly Sync, February the 19th, 2019. Woo! Uh, I am Aching Brain, I am your host. Uh, we're going to go around the room and do some updates on uh, what we did last week, what we're blocked on and what we're going to do next. Um, so I'll start. So last week we had the infrastructure team in London, which was super helpful. Uh, we got uh, proper logging and metrics on NPM on the uh, IPFS NPM registry mirror, which is lovely because now we can see like you know resource uses over time and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's been super helpful. Um, I investigated what I thought was a memory leak. Um, in the mirror, it turns out it wasn't a memory leak at all. What was happening was uh, it just it was ingesting npm too quickly, and it wasn't getting it onto S3 quickly enough. Uh, and so we we were putting all this data down, and it's just going into a buffer, waiting to go off to S3, which is filling up, and then the process was falling over. So that was good news. It just needed a bit of uh, a bit of tuning to be less less aggressively downloading stuff from npm. So that's uh, been great now for for pretty much a week. Um, so I'm closing that one off. Uh, I wrote some blog posts on NPM and IPFS on the client and the registry. Um, they are in progress. I need to address all the comments on that. Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm not blocked on anything. The next thing I'm going to be doing is looking into PubSub. Uh, so we've got this weird problem at the moment where um, so, the, so the replication master pulls down things from NPM, ingests them into IPFS, updates the, the, the packument, as they like to call it, uh, with CIDs for all the tables, and then uses PubSub to broadcast all the mirrors, hey, uh, there's been an update, here's a new here's a new packument, and then the mirrors go, cool, and replace their copy of the of the manifest with, with what they've been given, which all works for about half an hour or so, and then suddenly the uh, replication master's list of topic peers empties and it stops sending uh, messages to people even though it claims to be sending messages um, so i'm kind of looking into that at the moment i'm just running it all with a lot of logging going on with flood sub and i've opened an issue on the, the lib p2p uh, pub sub repo as well for a bit of help from the guys on that um, that's going to be me uh, i am away uh, from tomorrow until uh, the end of next week um, so i will be checking my email but i won't be doing very much stuff Cool, that is me. Uh, any questions? Uh, so with those metrics, do you know approximately how many package downloads the registry is serving or how many people are like actively using it? No, it's just uh, resource usage at the moment. Um, I've been meaning to chase up with Aaron how we can get like custom metrics as well. So at the moment what it's doing is just looking at the, um, the, the stats that all the Docker containers kick out. Cool. Uh, Andrew, what have you been doing? Um, so I'm, I, I don't know if I'd say caught up completely, but I certainly have a little bit better understanding of how Protocol Labs is doing stuff um, and have read a humongous amount of docs and issues and things. Um, the other kind of noddy little thing that I did was a... Oh, I can I can screen share this thing. Let's try this. Uh, based off of the registry, how do you, oh what that doesn't the crypt pad? It makes it look like links are links, but they're not links, are they? Uh, let's try this. Share go. Um, so I made a little page that you can type in a, a package name, uh, and it will go to registry.js.ipfs.io and pull the uh, data from the API there. And it really only shows the latest version and the, um, the CID if it's available right now. But potentially there's a few different things that you could do with that. Uh, it could be wrapped up in a Chrome extension that we could basically make, if you visit NPM, it could insert the CID for a given version into the page. So people could copy pass to that uh, uh, if they were interested in pulling it directly from there. Uh, the, oh, that's weird. If I drag my window around, it's, oh, that's very strange. Um, 
I also that kind of in, uh, building that made me realize that and we needed cause adding to the registry so I added that as well as a little thing um, this isn't hosted on IPFS but it is a single page so I should think you'd be able to do that if we wanted to but probably it's just a case of making it part of the registry as a, as a built-in um, web page rather than like a whole separate thing. I don't think we want to go ahead and build another libraries IO on top of that just yet. Uh, the, um, I also started looking into, I've not really started building it yet, but I made a, started making a plugin for Bundler, the Ruby gems, um, dependency manager. And it has quite a nice set of APIs to be able to extend the um, the manifest format, so you can actually add more content to a lock file, a gem file dot lock uh, in Ruby gems, without that like being blasted away by existing clients. Uh, it will basically only update the sections that it cares about and allows you to add stuff in. So you can add in an IPFS block at the bottom, which could store CIDs uh, and then be used for a retrieval from the source type of extension that you can put into Bundler that basically says like there are different ways of going about loading packages. Uh, they don't have to be loaded over HTTP. You can add in all different ways uh, and they actually implement three of them themselves, the Git one, the, uh, the path one, and there's another one. Oh, regular rubygems.org. Um, so, started, I don't think it'd be too complicated to do, to basically make a command that will take your existing installed Ruby gems, put them on IPFS, get back the CIDs for each package or each file dot gem, which is what you get from rubygems.org, and then write that into the gem file dot lock so that you can reproduce the whole thing again without needing to be online. You can just talk to your local IPFS daemon. Um, but that does require updating the Ruby uh, IPFS HTTP API wrapper, which there's there's an active maintainer behind it, but he is a little bit slow. So I've been working on a fork of that um, as just a, like an aside. And then I also started writing up my thoughts on some short-term roadmap stuff, uh, which is the link is in the crit pad. Um, thinking about some of the different kind of uh, reasons why we want to get things on, get different package managers on in IPFS from different points of view, either from maintainers of package managers, from users of package managers, or from protocol labs, IPFS. Uh, and then also categorized very broadly uh, groups of package managers into ways that actually affect how we might go about uh, getting them to implement IPFS into centralized registry, portable registry, which is a fun one um, where users literally are downloading a whole copy of the registry every time that they install something. Uh, multiple registries, which is Maven and apt and RPM being the ones that are like, they're pretty much already doing all of this and solve most of these problems. And then registry less, which is the like arbitrary URLs on the internet, uh, which becomes, uh, it's slightly easier in some ways. And then dependency resolution is significantly harder or they just don't bother uh, in other ways. See GX uh, as an example of not bothering to do any dependency resolution. But basically then taking those categories and looking at different ways that we could um, make some use cases or some different approaches to solving uh, some form of like basic IPFS support without needing to completely burden the uh, registry maintainers with adding a whole load of extra stuff that they need to support forevermore, which is um, tricky. Next thing that I'm going to do is talking of registry maintainers, reach out to a few, uh, a few people that, I've probably ones that I've already spoken to on the manifest or that I know about how uh, interested they'd be in adding support for IPFS and the challenges that they see documenting some of that and probably end up recording those calls to, to 
to get an idea of what the kind of broad consensus would be for uh, tackling something like that and whether they would any of them would be actively interested uh, and seeing what the kind of blockers to that are uh, as well as working a little bit more on this roadmap and talking to more people about it and trying to get their thoughts and see how that connects to what the next steps for those things are. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Any questions? Uh, I have a question, but I, I also uh, I had to stop listening for, for a few seconds. So maybe you already answered my question. Um, so sorry for making you repeat it. But so so I, I think there's like two phases to this roadmap for package managers. One of them is like what the package man manager working group is going to focus on, the relationships, etc. And, and the other part is really like this list of requirements that we want to create as soon as possible to inform all of the other working groups, right? There, there is this huge dependency right now where people kind of like assume intuition, but it'd be great to have the leadership from the package managers working group with like support of other working groups, of course, to just kind of like identify what would be the top level items so that the other working groups can like adjust their roadmaps for Q2 and, and onwards. Um, um, so, so did you have time to think about that? Like, um, is this on the pipeline? Um, so I need to speak to more people that are more aware of the like <laughs> levels of implementation and readiness for IPFS. Um, which is something that I, I will add to my list to do this week of trying to gauge, like, given these things, how achievable are those things? Because I'm still uh, kind of in the weeds a little bit there on what things are good, what things are bad. I mean, the getting the DHT stuff it, working with um, the NPM registry will be a really good kind of test to see how much those kinds of things can work and like can we then get other people to connect their hosted versions of those of that registry or you know the similar kind of bit of code to actually all start working together and being told about new versions of things being published um but as it connects to how exactly the um ipfs roadmap should change i'm still uh not exactly clear on that so i think it's more a case of going like here are things we want to achieve and then speaking oh, yeah. to the people that are connected to know how achievable those things are yeah i think you're right and and i don't think like we are expecting especially that given that you just joined the project and and like this working group just got bootstrapped that like you will be able to unroll a list of requirements ex specifically for which feature goes into which implementation but 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 like it's that list of requirements from the package managers land right uh how often are the publishes what is the size of the data set like what what would like what for example if you were to build a package manager today what would be the benchmarks that you would need to see from multiple file systems, multiple file stores that would give you the confidence that like it's ready to store all of your packages, right? Um, and, and so having those kind of like tests, benchmarks written saying, hey, if IPFS cannot handle like five terabytes every day, moving from like 10 mirrors, um, then a package manager such as, I don't know, company name or project name would not adopt it because that's what they are doing. Um, other things is, if we don't have a way, and I just touched on like, if we don't have a way for users to discover individual packages um, without like accessing a central registry, then we are not creating like extra fun value for, for the, these clients. Um, but like having that written down then, then helps the team understand, oh, I can then create a, a DHT providing policy where uh, only the CIDs of the package itself gets published, but not the internal blocks of the package. So now I'm I'm able to optimize like the publishing because I can like just remove all of these other provides from each block and all the intermediary nodes. Uh, and, and like from your point of view, you don't need to know like these internal details. You just need to to tell the group like the requirements. Um, and, and when I say you, like actually I, I really mean us. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like great great to have like your your insights and like leadership here. But I, there's a lot of things that we should be all collaborating to, to make this like uh, more complete and, and easier on everyone. 
I think uh, I think one of the requirements that's going to come out pretty quickly is is it has to be as fast at least as HTTP. Uh, well, but like from one to one connection, or mm. can we cheat by saying that like IPFS will be faster than HTTP as long as there is like five replicas? Well, exactly. You know, can we can we move the goalpost slightly? But like, we have to be able to say. I mean, we have to know under what conditions it is as fast as HTTP, um, because you know what we can't do is turn around like have have the maintainers turn around to their users and go, "Hey, cool, you got this like new thing." Oh, by the way, it's going to take three times to install everything, and three times as long. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, saw your hand. Go ahead. Um, it seems like from where we are to where we want to be, there's going to be, it's the progressive JPEG of what are the asks from the package managers working group. Like today, they're going to be pretty high level and a bit like, uh, we need to be able to store an NPM's worth of packages. And where we want to get to is in about four weeks, have something a lot more concrete that other people, other working groups can use to drive their, their goals for next quarter. So it, it might be worth, worth it like the, there should be a document that just gradually gets more and more clear. Like it's sort of, let's have a shared document between us. Alex, can you move very quickly? Because so, I'm, I'm hearing. We're echoing like crazy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, just that like that, it's worth making sure that that is explicit as an output of this group and that it's a priority for the next four weeks, I would say. Like, and to say that like the output is going to change over time and it's necessarily going to be super vague for the next week or two. But then like in four weeks, we need it to be something that can start being ingested by other working groups. Uh, so there should like, we should make a Google doc and it should have a well-known link that we throw around uh, and that it, uh, you know, this thing that progressively gets more specific. Um, there you go. So the, the task that Andrew has in his next section for contracting the package maintainers to interview about using IPFS is going to definitely form the skeleton of that document. And then, you know, as those conversations progress, it will get more and more concrete and then we'll have some actual tasks out of it. Yeah. I mean, what you might find is some of them are just like, unless you can give ways that we can delete stuff, then it's never going to happen. Uh, so that's a nice kind of fat, uh, line of like, well, we have to have a good story about how stuff needs to be suggested for removal. Whether or not that is a core feature of IPFS or if that is a application level uh, thing, there still needs to be some um, something in there. For sure. Definitely super useful to capture if people are asking for that. I mean, the first person I mentioned it to, the first maintainer I, I sent a, a DM to was like, but, but how would I delete things from there? <laughs> I was like, hmm. That's a super interesting one because he's been burned can, before. <laughs> yeah, because like the, then the question is, so there is a way to delete, right? Which is, um, here's a list of things that you should not resolve, right? Like, or you should not replicate. And then it's up to the user, right? In the same way that like people can go online and find like pirated content and download it. Like then it's up on the user. It's not on some company enforcing it. So we do have the strategy to do that, but we might want to reward what we call that because it's like denial lists or block lists and like, and like it, it is not, yeah. Like I, I think like for the package managers that are just like a better language saying, Oh, like the maintainer deleted this for your convenience. It's not that the IPFS registry is like censoring your view on this package. Um, like, yeah. So, yeah, so if you already have it, well too late. Uh, but yeah, Maybe the default behavior of these things is going to have such a big impact that for the edge case people, yeah, that's a, like that doesn't matter so much. But the default should be something that makes sense for I the want, majority because they're not going to break outside of that. I want reproducible builds, and maybe my build depends on that ransomware that you published last week. Like, I will, I will, I'll choose when I stop depending on ransomware. That's up to me. But, but I, hey, like, uh, it's funny. Reproducible ransomware. <laughs> it's funny, uh, but actually there's like one of the core propositions, right? Like that people get to to decide this and, and understand like 
rather than seeing a 404 out of the center. Yeah. Um, you, you make the default behavior like opt in to a shared a community deny list and do not rehost list, but then individuals can choose to thwart it at their risk. And once you get that, then you solve like, for example, yeah, who, whose use case where they have like white lists of packages that they are allowed to use internally. And so similarly, the thing that like, yeah, like the, the construction and lets you remove packages from the registry is also the one that like enables companies to be very happy, which is also the one that like certain countries with certain censorship rules will also make, like it will work for everyone, depending where you are. And the thing will just respect without like extra code to make it work. Um, so I guess like on this question, uh, my other question related to this is like how useful um, and, and like the answer can be, oh, this is totally like going nowhere, uh, but like how useful is the spreadsheet that we kind of like try to structure to capture this information? Like what are the things that these package managers do um, that then we need to listen to make sure that we can um, fulfill the requirement? Is this spreadsheet so the a good way to approach it? spreadsheet is not good, um, okay. but I think it feels like there's more dimensions than fit naturally in a spreadsheet. But I think the approach I'm kind of imagining taking is once I actually speak to a few people to be like, here are the kind of like the questions and they result in columns, I guess. Uh, but then actually trying to like if you just have the spreadsheet and you try and compare between the package managers a lot of those columns would be like well that would work but we have no buy-in from the maintainers to be able to do anything so trying to compare and sort by given columns won't necessarily be helpful it's more like for each there's a document that i have somewhere um that is kind of like groups of registries and clients together we kind of want to have a story or a some kind of like document for each one that keeps track of like the different approaches or attempts to do this by independent people beforehand, uh, the conversations we've had with the maintainers, any kind of already like stats that we've collected so that when you come to look at one, you can kind of then go like, here is the current story, the current situation and what we're planning to do about it. And then when, then we pull out like a high level here are the the groups of things that fit with this or here is the like the current highest bandwidth uh package manager that we know of or the one that fits with the most different mirrors that are public or you know rather than trying to squeeze what is going to be quite a rich text document into a spreadsheet i think we we make a folder full of them uh of the kind of the the groups of registries and clients and then um, build a story around each one because there's going to be, it, I think we just spin our wheels where we try to kind of normalize it out too quickly as saying they're all the same until we can get to like, here are a couple that are trying to implement the same thing and we see uh, where the, like, the similarities are. Does that make um, sense? Yeah, you, I think you already spoke about this, but um, your your definition of clusterings of different package managers is worth restating. That to, so, like you've currently got three levels of like centralized repository, portable repository where homebrew style it's bundled, and then like meaningfully pluggable repository. I think I can't remember what the last one was, but the yeah, the last one was the fully registry lists. Yeah. like arbitrary urls point uh, where you like yeah yeah there's there's no consensus on anything mm. yeah yeah we just use dns and you're like ah mm. and so the levels that you're describing now are currently like those three cl your classifications of package managers yeah so i've got four class four categories of package managers which you can some of them kind of cross there are obviously always going to be the like this one is kind of this and kind of this uh but then like I group them into like if you were to hold on, I've got this link. Do you want to share your share your screen with the doc on? Yeah, I'm trying to find the doc. Uh, ba, ba, ba. 
Oh, where have I put it? Google Docs. Uh, just have a three minute warning. Uh, do, do. Well, I just want to say th thank you for so much for like explaining the the, um, the reason and uh, reasoning and the rationale. Uh, I I can see your point and I agree with you. Like definitely, it's very hard to capture all this information in the spreadsheet. And um, what I guess I would say, it might be a good experiment to do that, like in a week's time, as you progress with these discussions and as you get the chance to write down, like also your knowledge about all this space, to to create like small artifacts, maybe even it's just like a one-page doc or like five slides that you outline what would be like these requirements that can be communicated to the other working groups and then they could say, oh, okay, if that is a thing that we can, we have to meet, uh, an expectation that we have to meet, I now know which like objectives, which milestones I could add or remove from my uh, roadmap. So, so that like you also get some feedback because in the end, like you, you are not going to give to working groups, like you are, like we are not going to give to 10 working groups uh, 10 uh, like 50 folders of package managers information for them to then distill yep. themselves um so so yeah uh, so i don't know if you should be able to see this i basically Again, yeah. grouped um registry uh types where the there can be multiple instances of a registry even like self-hosted ones and then the clients that would speak to them there's not many clients that speak to different like more than one kind of registry so it's fairly easy to group them under maven is a beast uh, because there, there's many uh like public popular registries and then there's many clients including like closure and other like multiple programming languages that are pointed at that so that's a really juicy one to um to like there's lots of different options and different people uh, that have uh, ways of implementing things um, and I took basically the like the biggest application level or language level package managers um, mostly because I could pull all the numbers from libraries IO uh, I also think we're probably going to ignore the CPAN for the moment just because no one has written a client in it uh, <laughs> um, but as you go through then this sort of kind of like keep building up this story of what all of the different kind of requirements are for each different package manager or like group of things and then break them out into like, well, here's the high level summary of these conversations we've had so far and the existing uh, implementations that we know of. Uh, we are out of time. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna call this meeting to a close. Thank you for coming to the weekly update. Uh, we will see you all next week for another exciting round of Package Manager Update. Ooh.